Hello everyone. In this video we're going to explain how to run large numbers of CP2K calculations using a parcel to distribute the calculations and ASC to drive CP2K with Python. We're going to explain three different uh, styles of runs you may have. The first is running multiple CP2K jobs on a single node. Say if you're doing a, a very large high throughput calculation and don't care about speed. If you're running a single CP2K calculation across more than one node so that that calculation is fast. And if you're running more than one of those MPI tasks during the same job in case you want to scale to a very large job, say if you're using uh, DOE supercomputing resources. What we'll go through first is that um, first example, which is the running many CP2K jobs per node. What I'm walking you through here is a uh, GitHub repository that I've created to kind of help me uh, figure out how to run these calculations effectively on ALCF's Polaris supercomputer, which is one of the new uh, supercomputers at Argonne. And as mentioned, we're first going to talk about how to run serial calculations where I'm only using a single node, and in fact, in this case, one GPU out of four on a node for performing the calculations. So the way that this script is set up follows a pattern for many different types of um, parcel scripts. I start off with defining the function that I'm going to use to run um, my science application here at CP2K. You can see I do the very standard thing in ASC. I set up my calculator object. I've got a bunch of settings here that I need for my particular type of calculation. I then um, create the calculator. I run it. Here I'm running a, an optimization of the molecular geometry. And then I, well, I intentionally kill the calculator and return the runtime and the output. Uh, mind you, another little trick I do is I save the output as a string before sending it um, back to the um, managing process so I don't have to worry about any kind of serialization issues. So that defines my function again. What it does is it creates a CP2K calculator within ASC, which drives um, an ASC calculation. I perform an optimization, kill the CP2K calculator so that it's no longer running before the next task, and then send the results back. The next part of the script defines where this work is executed. This is created using a parcel configuration language, uh, which is defined by me telling what sort of executor I want. An executor is what's used by parcel to execute functions on a computing resource, where here you can see I've defined it such that it creates four workers and it pins each of them to a different GPU and it pins each of them to different um, CPUs. And then this worker uh, is created or is launched on the resources using a provider. So uh, this provider is designed to work with the PBS job scheduling system at ALCF. And I've got a bunch of boilerplate that's very specific to this system. But the basic idea is I say what account I'm charging, I define how to set up my computational environment, namely loading the libraries needed for CP2K, change the directory containing my uh, input files, and then um, activate my Python environment, along with some other information like how long I want these jobs to run, what settings I want, and importantly, once I have this job, how I launch my worker, my executor onto each node. Here um, I'm using the MPI exec launcher, uh, which maps to the MPI exec used on Polaris. And you can see some additional options that I've provided saying how to bind each uh, manager to the CPUs. So I create it such that I bind each manager to a total of 64 processors and each one gets mapped to a single node or I only put one manager. So to recap, what I do here to define my computational environment is I create an executor. An executor creates workers. 
I define those workers to uh, map each to worker to a different accelerator and different CPU threads. Then I define how to get resources for this executor, which is using a provider. And importantly, I have a launcher in here that when my job starts, places each, um, man, each executor on a different node using MPI. So then the rest of this is another fairly uh, simple parcel script. I submit a bunch of calculations, and when I submit a calculation, it gives me a future. I then wait for these futures to be marked as completed, at which point I retrieve the result or print an error message if that calculation didn't finish correctly. And this um, runs pretty effectively. I've um, run a few hundred of these uh, calculations on Polaris using different settings of CP2K. So you can see here, um, for a single node job, Polaris is slightly faster than my desktop computer, which has a similar processor and GPU. All right, so that's showing the simple example of how we run um, multiple CP2K jobs per node. The next thing we're gonna do is run a single CP2K job that spans multiple nodes. So the script here is gonna look very similar to the last one we talked about. You'll see it's got the same function up front. I run a CP2K calculation, and the one thing you'll notice immediately different is I define an MPI command for how to launch CP2K. And you'll note I define that, CP2, that MPI exec command to have all of those nice settings needed to run effectively on Polaris, including uh, mappings of how I map each MPI rank to different processors. I also use a script provided by ALCF to set each um, MPI rank to map to a different GPU on each node, and I point to a parallel version of CP2K. So the one thing you may notice is this MPI exec command happens inside of the job being run. That means my workers cannot be placed onto a node using MPI because once you launch a process using MPI, it can't spawn more MPI tasks from within it. So the one thing different about this configuration is you'll note I've got the same high throughput executor, but I've mapped it to only have one worker, that I'm only gonna have one worker uh, for every manager. And I changed my manager such that it has this simple launcher which means it's not using MPI to place one manager on each node. Only a single manager will get placed per job, and my job can have more than one node. So what this means is when my function becomes executed, or um, there will only be one worker available on which to run it that is sitting on a node and it's able to launch MPI tasks. So what ends up happening is I submit my calculation, um, I requisition nodes to run it, it eventually at some point calls this MPI uh, command to launch uh, CP2K across multiple nodes. So that's the one key difference here. Um, again, uh, my CP2K command now includes its own MPI execution, and I've removed any notion of MPI from the parcel configuration. And I forced parcel to only create a single worker because the way that this um, job is designed, I'm going to have a single job running at each time that's going to use all of my available resources. And that's going to segue, segue me into the last example I want to talk through, which is to run multiple tasks that each run on multiple nodes. So here, I'm going to have to do some trickery with both the MPI exec command used to launch CP2K and the um, uh, MPI law, or sorry, the um, configuration used to start the um, parcel workflow. So let's start with parcel first. So this is the script that's launched or run at the beginning of my um, job that's going to run these, MP these CP2K calculations. And you'll notice like before, I set up my computational environment to be able to run CP2K and I will activate Python in order to be able to run parcel inside of that node. 
But there's this one particular line here that starts with split. What this is doing, and I got this um, lovely bit of Linux know-how from ALCF's documentation, takes my available list of nodes that are available to run calculations and divides them into a certain number of chunks, where each chunk contains the number of lines, which each line is a different um, node, equal to the number of nodes I want to use per each CP2K calculation. So uh, what ends up happening after I run this is I'll get a directory full of these different host files, where we can see an example here. I have a host file, in this case, that only contains a single node. So now that I have these populated, what's going to happen uh, with my job script, and we'll go back up to this invocation here, is for each different job running, it's going to use a different host file. So that's visible in this line here. If you notice, um, I've added to my mp exec uh, command a designation that I should look up a host file. I give the path of the host file. I know where this directory was created. It's in the current directory of where the script is, slash host files, slash, then I import an environment variable that tells me the name of the job in which this command is being run. So that gives me the directory, you can see it here. That's the name of the job. And then gives me the name of the host file, complete with a different number based on which rank this is. I'm having multiple parcel uh, workers run per job. This looks up the number of this job and gives me a different MPI command, uh, or sorry, a different number based on which worker we are. If we go down here, we can see I have more than one worker per job. So what ends up happening is when I run a function, it gets mapped to a different worker in parcel. At some point, that worker is going to call uh, this MPI exec command and when I pass that to the supercomputer to run, it will look up from its environment the name, or sorry, the number of the worker and map it to the appropriate file. So now I have each MPI task running on a set of nodes that it is the only one allowed on. And that allows me to run a lot of these calculations at the same time. And you can take a look here. I happen to have a job that started running about an hour ago. It's already completed about 200 uh, calculations. And uh, we'll do something real quick. We're gonna look at my um, run info for this job. Um, I'm gonna look to see what nodes this is running on. All right, here we are. So here's the node number that I believe I'm actively running on. Oops. <coughs> All right, and let's open up top, and we can see if I look at all the MPI exec commands that are running. So I'm running, it looks like, 10 jobs at now. And if you look, see, here's the host file command. And each of these different MPI tasks is running on a different um, set of no host files. So they're each running on different calculations. And, or they're each running on different nodes. And I'm comfortable knowing that because I can look that despite having uh, 10 calculations running, there's only one instance of CP2K running on this particular node. Instead of, if I got this wrong, there would be 10 times more than that. So 40 different processes trying to use this single node, which is gonna be a problem. And if we take a look here, because I did the uh, node affinity mapping, um, each of them is running on a different GPU. So everything's happy here. I'm running many different MPI tasks, each MPI, or sorry, many different instances of CP2K. Each is running with multiple MPI uh, ranks. Each rank is got its own set of CPUs and GPUs that it's using. So this is running as fast as possible. And uh, if we take a quick look here, uh, it looks like I think it's on the order of a few minutes per calculation thanks to the kind of large um, uh, resources available at ALCF. So that wraps up the information that I want to get through today. I'm going to link you to all of the source code and the um, pages 
of documentation that I brief, briefly flipped through so that you can dig in and hopefully understand this in a greater degree um, after just the splash tour that I've given you today. Well, have a nice afternoon.